Hey, what's up, Integrity fam? We are back with an exciting Academy session on AXXE or AXML external entity injection. And today we're going to have a look at a sophisticated payload where we are going to use an SVG image file to exploit the application. And without further ado, let's immediately jump to our web app. And this is once again by Port Swigger. And we're having this beautiful blog over here and it talks about traveling. We have a funny guy with a hat on and there's a couple of things going on, but we're going to focus on the first post. And what we can see over there is that apart from a little bit of text, we do have a comment section. And of course we are going to try this out. So what we are going to do is we're just going to say, um, our comment is test, our name is test, our email is test at example.com. And we're going to try to post a comment. But if we do that, we immediately learn that the application is not happy with us because we're missing an avatar. And uh, this file must be an image. So we're going back, we're going to quickly have a look at the avatar uh, box over here. And we do see that we can select the file. So what we want to do right now is we want to upload an image. And with that, I want to start speaking about SVG files. So an image comes in different forms. It could be a PNG, a JPEG, or an SVG. And the interesting part over here is that an SVG is XML based. It's a vector image format. And if you read the word XML, you should already be alarmed because we are talking about XXE today. And this is exactly what we are going to do right now. We're going to download an SVG file. Uh, this is an example file right over here. We're going to store this in a computer. And after that, we're going to try to upload that to the blog. So we're going to choose a file. It's called svglogo.svg. And we are going to post that as a comment. We are going to turn on our interceptor in Bird because we want to inspect what we are going to send to the application. So if we do that, we do see that we're sending a post request to slash post slash comment with a body that contains our SVG file over here. And you can see that an SVG file is really nothing else than an XML structure that is describing the image file. And if we send this forward, this to the application, we do see that um, we have posted the comment and we do see that next to our actual comment, we do see our little avatar with the file being the SVG file that we just uploaded. So let's go one step further. We're going to use that same request that we're going to send it to repeater. And what we're going to do over here is we just send it again. I usually do that just to make sure that the request is still valid and we do see that indeed it is sent another time. So once we have this state, we can try experiencing with a couple of payloads, trying something out. And we're going to payload all the things on GitHub over here. And they're having a section on XML external entities. And as a an interesting one, speaking about exotic files, especially inside SVGs. And there's a payload called classic payload. We're just going to copy that. We're going to delete all the XML from the image that we've uploaded prior to our exploit attempt right now. And we are going to insert the payload from payload all the things. And let's just quickly inspect that. So we're having obviously an XML and as in the previous video, we're going to insert a doc type called test that contains an external entity called XXE that tries to retrieve Etsy host name. So the host name of the underlying server serving the website. And we're going to reference that entity by saying ampersand XXE being the name and a semicolon. And once we got that in place, we can forward that to the application. So let's see what happens if we do that. We post a comment. We do see that we have actually posted a new one, but this time the image looks different. And why is that? Let's open that in a new tab and inspect the image a little closer. And what we see over here is 
that we actually printed out, we retrieved the host name and printed it into the image. So the cryptic text that you're seeing over here is the actual host name of our target. And in order to solve this lab, what we have to do is there's a little submit solution box. We just have to insert this host name that we've just retrieved. So we're going to do this, put down all the characters, and then we're going to click on OK. And if we do that, we do see that we have solved the lab. All right, as usual, let's quickly reiterate again over what we have learned. So first of all, we realized that AxeXE payloads obviously have to be part of an XML structure. And then we learned that if there is an image upload somewhere, we can always try to upload an SVG file or like a scalable vector graphics file because those files, they are made out of XML. And if you put one and one together, you could come up with the idea of putting an AxeXE payload into an SVG image. So this is what we've done next. We have incorporated a payload into an SVG image and that crafted SVG file we have used to upload to the application. And as the underlying web server at the XML parser was not successfully validating the content of the SVG file, we actually got our, in that case, in that lab, our host name printed back in the little image box and we could retrieve some sensitive information. All right, I hope you learned something new today. As always, please let us know down in the comment section if you like the video, um, what else you wanna see from us. Give this video a like and subscribe in the top right corner and I will talk to you folks soon.